Guess what? Trayvon Martin was fairly shot by Jewish Zimmerman, who mm -hmm. got off free and clear. Yes. Trayvon's parents so eloquently stated, as Christians, we have to forgive, but it's a process. I love their honesty. And we're still going through that healing process of forgiveness. We're still in the process to forgive. We know it's coming, but we're just not there yet. Some of you need to make Trayvon Martin's parents journey today. At the bond hearing of Dylan Roof, the murderer of nine Christians in a church in Charleston, South Carolina, Nadine Collier, the daughter of 70-year-old Ethel Lance, said at the hearing, the bell hearing, with her voice breaking with emotion, I forgive you. You took something from me that was very precious and I will never talk to her again. I will never ever hold her again. But I forgive you. I have mercy on your soul. She said it was because of what she needed, not him. I share these stories with you because these are real people. So you may say, well, that's just the Bible. But these people suffer great loss. And in both cases, these Christians felt forgiveness provided them the best relief in life so that they can move forward. We understand what forgiveness does because we've actually freely received a pardon for our sinful life from Jesus. Do we deserve to be forgiven? Probably not. No, not really. In fact, absolutely not. Are we forgiven? Praise yes. God, yes. Thank you, Lord. Once Mac forgives, he is finally able to move forward. That's the symbolism of the tree sprouting and growing. God brings something beautiful out of his pain, his ashes, caused by sinful and fallen humans under the influence of the devil. And God works right in that. God wants to do the same thing for you today. God doesn't cause all the pain and the heartache in our life. Please stop blaming him. But if you allow him, he will actually redeem it and bring something great out of it, just like that plant. But in order for that to happen, like Mike, Mac, we have to open our heart to God. I pray you are ready to release the past and find moving forward a whole lot easier. It's a process. Forgiveness and release is. So start now. You know why I call it release? I call it release for a very simple reason. It's not about what happens in them. It's about what happens in you. By releasing your spirit into God's love, you allow your own therapy to happen through the Holy Spirit. You allow bitterness to leave. You allow unforgiveness to leave. Some of these things are causing you headaches and sleepless nights. You're tired, you're groggy, you're irritable, yes. you're hormonally imbalanced, going up and down. Yes. It's just eating you up from the inside, holding on to the grudge of whatever was done to you. Join the club, guys. We all have had something done to us. We all have pain. And what we're not going to do today is to have a pain duel where we get to one of each other and go, well, my story is worse than your story. Let's all agree we got a story. Yes. The only way to solve this story and make it better is to move forward. And the only way to move forward is to forgive, to release, to let it go. Let God deal with us so we can realize he's right there with us. And just like that plant, something beautiful is coming out of us. I hope you enjoyed this work today. I'm going to turn it back over to our campus host for the day that they might lead you in a prayer for forgiveness and bring you right to the foot of Jesus. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Amen. Bishop. Wasn't that an awesome and powerful message? Yes. Awesome and powerful message. But even now, I'm thanking God for just the healing journey in my own life. Amen. I mean, Bishop's last point said, forgiveness gives us release and is the only way forward. Turn to your neighbor and say, the only way. The only way. The only way. I mean, unforgiveness, the only way you heard this before. unforgiveness is like you drinking poison, expecting the other person to die. Who do you hurt? Yourself. You yourself. hurt yourself. But sometimes forgiveness can be challenging, you know, because I know I've, I've dealt with it myself where I felt like, wait a minute, if I forgive them, who's going to get them? Has anybody been there? Who's going to get them? And I feel like I need them to get God. Anybody like... God, I want you to get them and get them good. But Romans 12 and 19, the Lord says, vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. We can clap, yes. Vengeance is mine. When Mac was going there, he dropped a heavy bag. He dropped
drop the heavy bag. Who needs to drop a heavy bag of unforgiveness today? Yeah. You don't have to raise your hand, him. but let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Because Hebrews 4, 15 and 6 for says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I'm going to pray two prayers with you today because maybe before you can give someone else forgiveness you need to receive forgiveness yourself maybe you want to receive the forgiveness that comes through jesus christ and we're going to pray with you today and then right after that right after that we're going to pray for those of you that need to just lay that burden at the feet of jesus today and right after that if you have accepted um jesus as your personal savior you can check that net that box on the next step card Okay? All right, so right now, together, we're going to pray with those of you that want to receive Jesus. We start 